Hello, welcome to Fantasy Grounds Unity. This is Doug Davison with SmiteWorks USA LLC, and I'm going to show you how to access the Fantasy Grounds Unity platform, how to host a campaign, join a campaign, and just kind of the basics of the initial getting started setup guide here. So here I've already got my my username set up as D Davison. I've got my version number here in the upper right, and I've got an ultimate license. This is also the the date that this version was pushed, so this number will change as you continue to update your system. If you have any issues, please do report back with this information here uh, and your username to customer support, which you can get here by clicking on the email support button. That'll take to take you to support at fantasygrounds.com uh, where we will address it um, within 24 hours or less, much uh, sooner in most cases. So I'm going to show you very quickly the settings. So if you click on settings, it'll launch an app here, which is called the FG Updater Engine. From here, you've got your license key, which is all going to be in asterisks. You can find this from the store order history site if you ordered through uh, the Fantasy Grounds website. If you ordered on Steam, we're not on there yet for Fantasy Grounds Unity. But uh, if you do have a Fantasy Grounds Unity key, once we launch on there, you will be able to access it by going to your Steam library and then going to uh, Manage when you right-click on Fantasy Grounds Unity. Right now, if you have it on Steam, you only have a Fantasy Grounds Classic license. Uh, classic licenses will not work with Fantasy Grounds Unity. Uh, the same is, is on our website if you have a Fantasy Grounds Classic license. If it doesn't say Fantasy Grounds Unity, it's a different type of license. Uh, username and password, that is what secures all of your licensed uh, content that you purchase. So if you purchased adventure modules or new rule sets or token packs, this is what drives that. And you're going to basically fill this information in and click in, click login. If you don't already have a, an account, click create account and you will access one there. Even if you don't have purchases, you will need, need to have a username and password created from our website in order to connect and game with anyone. The uh, account tab here, this is for linking uh, your account to Steam if you have a Steam account or linking to Paizo in order to get uh, discounts through uh, ownership of PDFs on Paizo.com. Uh, and then finally, you have the advanced tab, which has the directory where the application is installed and the data directory. Note that if you are also a Fantasy Grounds Classic user, you need to use a different uh, location for both of these because they will interact with the files differently. And while they are compatible with um, content brought over from Fantasy Grounds Classic, you can't use them interchangeably back and forth. And then this is the uh, channel. So here you have live, test, and dev. You can switch to that if you wanted to test out a new version that we have just pushed to test, for instance, to address a specific issue that you may be having. Uh, and then you can flip back to live. The campaigns and everything, all your data will be stored in a slightly different uh, folder, different copy of that. So it will use up more hard drive space, but it will keep things separate so you won't risk ruining anything if you switch over to test or dev to try something out and then you decide to later revert back to your live channel. All right, so that's the just there. Once you've done all that and saved, You'll click update. It'll install any purchases you've just made. It'll install the newest versions of Fantasy Grounds Unity, and everybody should have the same version of Fantasy Grounds Unity when they play. All right, so I've gone back to uh, launch Fantasy Grounds Unity. This is the launch screen again. You've got your release notes, uh, some general buttons to basic guides and systems. I highly recommend you check out the basic guides to learn how to interact with Fantasy Grounds Unity once you're inside the inside the system, and then the game systems. Each system is different, so uh, Dungeons and Dragons will play differently than uh, Pathfinder and differently than Savage Worlds, Call of Cthulhu, Vampire, Ma the Masquerade, or, or whatever. Um, join game will let me see any of the people who are currently running a game. So if I find their name down here, I can just click, double click on those. If I have a lock indicator, that means that there's going to be a password for that. Uh, this person here does not have a password, so uh, I could potentially jump into that game. They may or may not like that. So uh, make sure that you're aware of who's running the game. Normally, the the way to find games is to go to the forum or to the Discord channel, looking uh, looking for group or looking for players. Notifications will have information on games and when they're going to be scheduled to run. These are all actively running right now on our system. Uh, and then history will show any previously joined games that you've had. So it'll have an indicator that says whether it's currently running or not. You can just double click from here as well. Uh, or you can look it up by the GM name. If you know the GM's name and they're running it, if they don't have it publicly listed here, because they may not want people just you know, seeing that they're running or clicking through and trying to join their game uh, and guessing passwords or whatever, 
then they would go to join by GM name, or uh, if they've run a LAN game, they could put in the IP address here and then connect it with any of those. Uh, just select it and then hit start. It'll download everything that you need as a player to play in that particular game. So in this case, they're playing Pathfinder 2 Rise of the Rune Lords. If I don't have that rule set, it'll still give me everything that I need to connect and play with that game while I'm connected to this GM. But we're going to host a game, actually. Uh, I also recommend when you first come in, go through the 5e sample campaign um, and experience that. And then you should um, have an understanding of how to use everything. Here you've got your internal and IP, your internal and external IP addresses. You shouldn't need this at all. Then you have the IPv6 information here for both of those. Uh, that's just technical sort of stuff. You don't really need that right now. And then here you have a list of extensions that you can activate for any of the selected campaigns that you wanted to load. And you see I've got a lot of different stuff because I got a lot of things loaded in my system. Most of these are going to be decals and new themes. You only want to pick one theme, but you could pick theoretically multiple decals. I'm going to create a new campaign. And then here I've got a list of all the game systems that I have installed. You can install new ones by going to our wiki and then downloading some that are community rule sets. Or if you've purchased such as uh, Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition or Castles and Crusades or any of the other systems that we have here, you will see a new system here that will show up uh, for you. Uh, PFRPG is Pathfinder. That's first edition. That's second edition. Dungeons and Dragons will be listed under the version here. So 2E is the AD&D second edition, uh, 3.5E, 4E, 4th edition, and 5th edition D&D. So you want to select uh, 5E, give it a campaign name. This campaign could be, in, for instance, if you wanted to run the, like, the Lost Mine of Fandelver, you would basically just say, um, Weekly, Lost Mine of Fandelver game, whatever you want. This will show up in the list of the lobby if you make it a public cloud game. Also, if you make it a public cloud game, you do want to set a password here. So I'm just going to say not for you. And then under the GM name, I would just leave that as GM normally unless you wanted to give yourself a, a new title for the game. So Cloud Public is going to automatically uh, set up the game for you and then your players will connect with that as well. Then um, you can make it private and then people can access your game still through the cloud, but they have to put in your GM name. They have to know that you're actively running the game at a certain time. And then you would tell them uh, through some other channel such as Discord or Skype or Google Hangouts, that your game is loaded and ready for players. The players do not connect at this stage. They wait until your system is fully loaded before they would connect to the game. And then LAN would allow you to run the game yourself over a local area network or to uh, use port forwarding and then set it up where they would connect to your external IP address, for instance. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a cloud game and I'm going to make it public, but set a password on it. And I'm going to click start. You'll see a little note here that I'm starting the server. And depending on how many things you have uh, on your account, it will take a little while longer to load those, depending on you know the number of tokens and assets and all that sort of stuff that you might have in your system. In my case, I actually have the entire catalog of Fantasy Grounds content on my system, so uh, it takes me a little bit longer. I'm going to pause the video for a second, and then we'll resume in just a moment. Okay, so my campaign is just loaded up, and I see the default theme. Each rule set will have a different look, and then depending on the theme that you have, it will look differently. Uh, the campaign setup, this is a basic tutorial that tells you how to get access to user manuals, the forums, the wiki user guides, and I do recommend checking those. And then here's a list of data modules that you can load. You can just access this by clicking on the modules button here. It'll load up all of your modules that you want to activate. Again, I've got a lot of them, so it should be a little bit faster on your system than on mine. Okay, so see it here, I've got all of my adventure modules. And I would want to load in uh, some of the Dungeons and Dragons content. I will probably, since I have so much, I will just look for Player's Handbook, probably. All right, so I have that one. Here's the one that I want. 
when you click on load you'll see it will change this book to a open book and let's add the Sword Coast Adventures guide basically every one of our rule sets will have some form of this which will have player specific content that we want to use once you've done that you can access library and then this will have a list of features that you can access. So here I've got all of these things. I've got like the classes, uh, races, any information that I need. Most of these are, you're going to drag and drop to your character. Look at your uh, rule set specific documentation on how to create a character. Follow those instructions. If there's something called a reference manual, this is something that's uh, spread across each of our rule sets, but it's basically the equivalent of going through and clicking and then reading the book. And you can kind of go through very quickly, read through the various sections of the book, or you can expand things out, uh, do searches, that sort of stuff. So it has um, basically all the content you would need to get started playing most games. Every rule set that we sell uh, officially will have a reference manual, which includes the core rules of how to play that specific game. So do refer back to that to learn how to actually create a character within the actual game system, and then refer to our wiki on how to create a character within Fantasy Grounds for each system. Uh, do know that you can also um, click and open up these pages. You can save them down to a hotkey bar. Whoops, if I can grab the little shortcut, you can save it to a hotkey bar. So if you later accidentally close out the books, you can just click on this and it opens it back up again. Uh, or I can hit the F4 button to launch that. Another important thing that you're going to do a lot of is you're going to try to import maps of your own. So here I've got a couple modules loaded. So I actually have content in here. If you don't have any modules loaded yet, this will all be blank. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to like a new section so that you're not showing uh, other content. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get it into your assets folder. And then from there you can move it around. So here I've got portraits, images, assets, and there will be a folder called campaign once I actually added something here. So I'm going to click on folder. And now that I've got a folder, uh, you can see it goes into my Fantasy Grounds campaigns, weekly LMOP game, and then images. So I'm going to pause for a second, look for an image I can use, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went to dnd.wizards.com, look for a map, and then under images. And they've got a handful of different maps here that you could use that all look really pretty cool. So I'm just going to find one of these and let's see, which one should I use? I'll just use this one here and I'm gonna drag it over into here and I'm gonna rename it to something else. I'll call it Dungeon. And now that I've done that, uh, let's see, I should probably do maybe one more just to show you a couple options. So I'll do that and then I'll do like the map of Faerun Map of Faerun. Oh, one thing to note, this is probably a really small version of that. So I need actually the big the big version. So let's see. Open image and new tab. There we go. That's probably better. So that I can probably save and put that in my folder. There we go. Put it in my folder here. And I'm going to go back and do, let's see, the same thing for this image to get a bigger one. Save image as. There we go. So I'm going to get rid of these other two that I did. So now that I've got those there, uh, I should now have a campaign folder here. I had to toggle off to portraits in the back. So there we go. Now I've got this, a dungeon map, and the map of Faerun. There's that one, and there's that one. 
and now they're usable in my campaign. I can close my assets window and I'm all set. So uh, let's shrink this down a bit. All right, so you can zoom in and out, middle mouse button to move around if you want. To share that with the players, you would right click and say share sheet, and then that gives it to all the players that are connected. Uh, you can unlock or lock it if you don't need to actually modify it. If you want to draw on it or do anything else, you could unlock it and then manipulate it that way. In this case, I want to probably add a grid because I want it to know the grid. I'll probably want to go in and add some line of sight and, and make the doors and all this other kind of stuff. Do refer back to the interacting with uh, images and maps on our wiki for more instructions on that. But very quickly, I'll just show you how to set a grid. You're going to set the grid with the mouse. I'm going to zoom in a bit and then grab from one corner down here. And then you can fine tune it. Uh, it's probably actually 50 instead of 51. And then you can bump it up or down, left, right, whatever. That looks pretty good. Maybe, there we go. Cool. So now I've got a grid. And now uh, the next thing that you want to do, that you're going to do a lot, is you're going to have uh, everything gets dropped into a combat tracker and then from the combat tracker down to here. So very quickly, I'm going to just create a blank PC. Bob the Barbarian. I'm going to double click here to add a portrait. And let's see if you look under Smite Works, should be in alphabetical order. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. And I'm going to use John's character. Uh, make it, you know, finish making the character if you want. But for now, I just needed somebody in here in my combat tracker. And now that he's there, I can drag him to the map and he can click. And now he can be in play mode. He can actually move himself around or he can use the arrow keys to move around. So that's the very quick and dirty how to get started in Fantasy Grounds. Uh, just again, refer back to your specific rule set and how to do it within your game system. But the basics of creating an asset, moving it into your image, and then populating the combat tracker with both players and with enemies, and then from here to the map uh, is what you're going to need to do. So thanks for watching, and uh, tune in for more videos. Thanks.